Okay, today we're going to show you how to clean these fryers. Pardon the noise, but you're in the kitchen and you're going to hear some compressors. But uh, here's what you're going to have to do. Uh, you're going to have to go get yourself a couple of buckets. And this was for the rough debris, which we don't use anymore. Oh, good. <laughs> My compressor stopped. Anyways, I'm going to show you how to save a step and it's going to be quicker. Your oil will be cleaner. Uh, so a couple of buckets, you won't need that. That's the old way. And you're going to need a funnel. And you're going to also need a paper funnel holder that will go over the bucket. And these filters are uh, made by Royal. And they're an EFC10. And make sure when you use these, you turn them inside out. They tell you to do that. It probably has something to do with the process of making them. And if there is a piece of metal fiber or something, uh, you know, they don't want it going into your product. So, uh, also, we've got all these fryers numbered. So, uh, when you see the oil out there marked for fryer one, fryer two, well, there's your number right there. We got fryer one, fryer two, that's three, that's four, it's marked as well. So, anyways, uh, first thing we want to do is grab yourself a piece of cardboard. Uh, we store it over here in the closet close by so we don't have to go running for it. If we have a little spill, it's going to be a lot easier to uh, have it drip on here versus a slippery floor that's going to be a dangerous workplace environment. And where we're going to save time here is, is what we used to do is we used to open the fryer and we would connect our, our pipe here. Now, if your pipe, if you're watching this video and it's a different business, you know, if this pipe is too long and you can't fit a bucket underneath it, you got to tilt the bucket a little bit. But if you can't, well, just, uh, you know, buy a shorter length of pipe here. And uh, what we're going to do to save time, back in the day, what we used to do is we would put this unit on here and open it full bore and all the heavy debris on the fryer would go in here. And then you would have to take your oil and strain it a second time. We would put it in another bucket and uh, put our paper filter in and then filter it and then dump it back into the uh, appropriately marked container. Now, we can skip this step and I'm going to show you how to do that uh, by not using this step here. And the other thing I want to remind you of too is this Pay attention, you know, don't contaminate your oils. We use fryer number one exclusively for chicken. And we use fryer number two exclusively for french fries. The reason that's important is, is our french fries are not being cooked in an oil that's ever been exposed to bread products. So if someone comes to the club and they want to have some fries and they have a gluten allergy, well, they can eat our fries. That's why it's always important to use separate buckets. I always make sure that I do the oil and fryer two first. And uh, after I do that, then I'm not worried about uh, any oil being contaminated because my, my oil is already packaged up. So let's, uh, let's get started here. The other thing I want to show you here is every time you come in to do an oil change, what you're going to do is you're going to put your initials you're going to put the date you perform the oil change and you're also going to put a number with a circle around it and that represents how many times that oil has been filtered. I found that right about eight uses and you need to dump it and get rid of it. You know, uh, speaking of that, if you keep your oil at 350 or 345, you're going to find it's going to last a lot longer. So we're going to do fryer two first. That's our french fry oil that's uh, for our gluten-free patrons and uh, after we get done here this number six is going to turn into a seven and uh, just go ahead and grab yourself like a scouring pad with some soap and that will come right off and then mark that a number seven when you're done. The other thing I wanted to mention is, is this is always done the day after. This oil is cold. Do not try to do this while the oil is hot. You cannot put hot oil in these containers. They'll get so soft, they'll probably melt. So 
anyways important thing there is to make sure that the oil is cold no fires on in your burners and you'll have a safe environment all right so we turned our paper filter inside out we drop it on here now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to tilt this thing in here and then we're going to crack that valve just enough where it's going to drain into our bucket but it's not going to overflow so don't go walking away washing dishes monitor it make sure it's come to an equilibrium and uh, and then once your oil gets to uh, the tip of the cone you're going to have to shut it down and tilt your uh, tilt your filter and your bucket out and set your uh, set your cone and everything over on the edge of an, uh, a trash can so it drips into a trash can and what I like to do is have a, a second bucket ready when I pull this one out and drop that in so it's not dripping you know even though that valve is off you're going to get some dripping what it's going to take is two buckets worth and these buckets will be about two-thirds full um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and start that process tilt it in All right, and let's crack this. You'll know you're going too fast if that oil keeps creeping up the filter. It's going to take a few seconds for the filter to get wet. Looks like I got it a little too fast, maybe. Let's tone it down just a hair. Okay, it looks like it's steadying out, and that's about right, right there. So. You can still do some chores, but keep peeking on this, otherwise you're gonna have one heck of a mess. And uh, like I say, we're gonna, if uh, for some reason you get on your last bucket and it wants to go up to the cone, you can always take and move the cone away just to here and it'll raise the bottom of that cone. And that'll give you a little more room in your bucket. But right now in this one, we'll keep it over here. All right, let's let that uh, fill up and we can swap it out for a new pail. Okay, so our oil is about an inch away from that cone. So what we're gonna wanna do is we'll uh, shut this down and let the rest of the filter drain out. Yeah, helps if you go the right way. All right, so our filter is pretty much drained out. Let's tilt that, get it out of there. Let's set that on the edge of the trash bucket, let it drip in there. And now we're ready to dump this oil. It is done for one bucket. Let's swap out another bucket here so we don't get dripping on the floor. And all we got left now is Go ahead and pour this in. I know this container is empty, so I should be able to fit this bucket in no problem, but don't be afraid to do a reality check because if you overfill these, it ruins the cardboard box. And if that happens, don't sweat it. You can either duct tape it if it's a little bit oily, or you can uh, take the whole plastic container and put it inside of a five gallon bucket. It will fit. They don't have much support without cardboard or a bucket. Let's take a peek just to make sure. Yeah, we got plenty of room there. Get the rest. Pour the rest of it. Okay. And put our bucket back. Put our filter back from the trash can. Start again. Make sure we tone it down if it keeps creeping up. All right, it seems to be pretty steady, and we'll wait for that to fill the bucket. All right, so we're all done now with this fryer. 
I don't bother, uh, sometimes what I like to do is uh, use one of these to get debris out when we're rinsing uh, one of these spoons and just hold it upside down and use that in the trough inside the bottom. But uh, I don't like to do that when we're uh, filtering oil because it's just going to make the oil a lot dirtier. So let's go ahead and throw our lever off. Let's get our filter over into the trash. We're going to dump that filter and we're going to start with a new filter. When we go to uh, do fryer number one, we want to make sure that we use a new filter because uh, it's just going to make the oil that much cleaner. Let's go ahead and uh, let's cap this. We know this one's full. And open this one up. And pour that in. And we'll be done with fryer two. Let it drain for a minute, get all the oil you can out of it. And that's good. All right, get that in here for now. Let's get our cap on. Next thing we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll scrub off these caps so we can mark them later. And this will say a seven now. We know this oil's been used seven times. All right, so either grab a nylon scrubber or one of these stainless scrubbers, and let's just squirt a little bit of uh, cleaner on there. All right, uh, on uh, fryer number one, I scraped off the seven and uh, put on an eight. I will tell you from experience, uh, I couldn't find a a sponge earlier but the sponge with the microfiber on here works a little better that uh, stainless I was using earlier it uh, it's a little <laughs> too uh, aggressive and it can put some deep scratches in your cap it might make it harder to remove the uh, the magic marker on that but anyways just a little tip there and you can see over here we've got fryer number one all ready to go I've unscrewed uh, my drain and put it down there for storage on fryer number two and let's go ahead and get this one started wait for it to settle out looks like I got a little too much volume going in there let's crack it close a little bit and that ought to do it we'll wait for that to Fill that bucket to the bottom of the comb. Keep in mind that all of this oil changing equipment is in the boiler room. There's a blue cart in there and you'll find all that stuff there. And just grab one of these metal spoons from the kitchen, clean it up and put it back when you're done. Okay, fire number one's pretty much done with that bucket. Let's shut that down. Let this drain out a little bit. Like I said, use your trash can and put it right on the edge. It doesn't take long though to, to drain that out. We don't want to waste any product. Okay, that'll just about do it.
put that on the edge of our trash can and we'll go ahead and what I like to do too is uh, I'll, I'll put my funnel inside the trash can uh, and I'll just set it inside of that old filter in there but let's go ahead and fill this up we know this one is just about empty so we're not going to have any trouble filling this up Don't fill your funnel up too much. You wouldn't want it to fall out. Okay. You're done with that. Let's go ahead and transfer our funnel to that second container. And you can see here on this second container, you know, we had a ruined box. So. What we had to do was uh, we had to take that and put it inside of a five gallon bucket and it, it fits nicely and uh, it'll get the job done. Otherwise this stuff is too soft. All right, round two on fryer number one. Tone that down a little bit. And wait for that to fill up. All right, fire one is done. Let's make sure we shut that off. You know, double, double check these valves. Make sure they're off. God forbid you start rinsing these out. Uh, you want the water to build up a little bit at first and then open it so it's got more volume coming out and filling the bucket and bringing heavy debris with it. But uh, make sure they're off for right now. And let's go ahead and get our filter out of there. That's drained enough. Let's put it in our trash can and throw it out. And let's fill our last container, double check it. Yeah, looks like we got plenty of room on this one too. What will happen is, is the more you use the oil, you're going to lose a little bit of product every time you fry. So those first three or four times, you know, you're going to have a lot of oil, and it's going to be easy to overfill these, so make sure you do reality checks. I already uh, started the hot water and got that scalding hot, so we're going to be ready to rinse here soon. Let that drain a bit. Okay. We are done filtering oil. And trust me, it takes a lot longer when you're using this, and there's really no need for it. You can dump it outside, and uh, it won't hurt a thing. The critters will eat it. The hose we use here is uh, a fitting that's on the hot water line and what we've got is uh, a sprayer here where we can have a single jet or a nice spray pattern. But uh, let's pull this out. We're going to have to be gentle with that. This thing is not supported very well. You don't want to break a water line. And what you're going to do is you're going to turn this water valve on. Make sure you turn it off when you're done. And we're going to run this water until it's scalding hot in one of the sinks. And then we'll be able to rinse. All right, so both fryers are empty. You can see there's a lot of uh, debris there. But the way we're doing it now, it, it leaves it in the fryer. And it'll be out of there in a minute once we rinse. This is French fry side, so not quite as dirty. Those chicken tenders drop a lot of debris. Another great reason to separate your oils, your oil is going to last a lot longer with your french fries. All right, we've got both drains in. I probably could have left this drain in, but sometimes it gets in my way. So we've got those back in. 
what I like to do just to bust up this oil a little bit is I like to put a little bit of Dawn in there, not a ton, but it'll help break it down. And remember, never ever put any uh, soaps or detergents in these fryers. That it would not be a good thing. Your food would taste terrible and uh, it may do other things to the patrons they may not like. Let's make sure we get these grates out of here too. We'll be washing those in the sink along with washing all the baskets. We will be using soap on these, but we're going to do real thorough rinses uh, when we're done. All right, we've uh, got our water scalding hot. What I like to do is uh, use like a, a shower head type spray, and I like to get all the sides and all the debris there first. I also like removing this separator and uh, Go ahead and get the sides and leave your valves closed for right now. Open these up. We can leave these open right now while we're rinsing. shower head spray at least two times and then what I like to use is the power jet make sure you get between all those burners Also concentrate that power blast right down the middle so any heavy debris can end up in your bucket too. you're done you're, you're gonna be able to tell you're not gonna be able to see any more heavy debris in there anymore what I like to do is leave my valves open take that spoon and put it a little bit of an angle and just keep swiping it down the middle so it goes out the drain next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some paper towels and try to get this back side here and the walls and once we're done getting as much of that oil off as we can because even if we were to boil this out you're still going to get oil residue so we don't want that going rancid on us so we'll wipe all that out with paper towels throw them away then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take some uh, bar rags and we're going to stick it down in the bottom and on the sides and get those as dry as we can and then we're going to be done. And always go out into the front room and check on top of the trash can there. Usually we're going to have uh, 
extra paper towels. You know, if there isn't any, no big deal. Just take it out of the dispenser in the kitchen. But I like to concentrate on getting the back first. Trying to get behind that rail as good as you can. Get all that oil out of there. Same thing with the sides. And we'll show you what it looks like when we got both of them done. If you've got some stubborn grease stains that are built up, just use this, no soap, just hot water, and it'll come right off and then use your paper towel again. It's important if you're going to remove any built up oil that you just can't get off with a paper towel, always use one of these. They stay together. You never ever want to use any type of a wire brush or a Brillo pad. That's going to leave metal fibers and that metal fiber is going to end up in the belly of a patron and that would be a bad thing. All right. We've uh, thoroughly wiped out both of the fryers with paper towels and tossed them out. We took off any buildup uh, with our stainless scrubber here. And now the last step is going to be to use our spoon and use our bar rag. Make sure it's a brand new one, clean. Do not use different ones. And use a different bar rag for this one and this one because remember, this one has gluten in it, this one doesn't, and that will keep our uh, celiac patrons happy. Let's go ahead and use this spoon and drop it down in, get all that water on the bottom. Same thing with the sides. You're going to go in and you're going to dry out all the water. Be careful of your... Uh, temperature and high limit sensors here. Don't bang those around. They're no fun to change. And when you're done drying it out and there's no beads of water left, you're going to clean up your tops. Make sure you clean the bottom of your, uh, your covers. Make sure there's no oil residue on those. And you're going to be done with the fryers. The next step would be going over to the sink and washing your grids, put them back on, and then you're going to have to wash your fryers out with a sponge, uh, no Brillo pads, and uh, some Dawn soap, and thoroughly rinse, and you'll be done. Last thing to wrap this up after all these are dried out and cleaned is uh, let's go ahead and make sure our drains are closed. And we're going to take off our drain pipes. Got to dump our water. We're also going to have to wash these buckets with Dawn again and make sure they're dried out and that way there's no aftertaste in that oil. Really important to do a good rinse job on your drain buckets. Let's make sure we make our entries and we'll get our initials here and the date. And fry number one now has eight uses. And fry number two has seven. Now our chart's filled out. All right, when you put these racks back in, make sure you put that support bar so it's on the bottom. That way when you put your baskets in the fryer, they're gonna sit nice and level. Otherwise, if you put that on top, it's gonna rock. When you're washing your fryer baskets, what you want to do is use your high pressure sprayer. You're going to hit them first, that will get any debris out of them. 
and go ahead and uh, use just a sponge, no Brillo, and uh, some uh, Dawn. And once you get them all soaked up on both sides and the bottom, then use your high pressure sprayer to give them a real good rinse off. And then just uh, a clean bar rag to dry them off and you're ready to go.